Educative.io has over 200 courses for software developers, but they don't use videos to teach the curriculum. Is this the new style of doing things in 2021? And more importantly, is Educative worth your time and money? We're taking a dive inside Educative.io's curriculum today, and the video starts right now. What's up developers? It's Real Tough Candy from realtoughcandy.io popping back on for another video today. We are checking in on educative.io. Now I say checking in because last year around this time, I did a video review of this platform. I was pretty impressed. So this time around, we're gonna look at the curriculum. We're gonna go inside and see what's changed, see if anything is worth noting, spoiler alert, it is, and what this platform is all about. Now, as I noted in last year's review, if you wanna check it out, it's popping on your screen. The only real reason this platform landed on my radar is because they asked me to teach a course. I was flattered. I had to respectfully decline though because I was working on my own platform realtoughcandy.io. And so I couldn't dedicate the time. I don't know if I would have discovered this platform if they hadn't have invited me. So what I'm saying is it's a happy coincidence. And if you haven't heard of this platform, you're not alone. But it looks like they're really picking up in numbers here. They have 425,000 plus learners working at some pretty big companies. I'm sure many more aside from this. So this is a landing page. It says become two times the developer in half the time. Learn the latest in-demand tech skills without the hassle of setup or video. And this right here really defines what makes this platform different than all the rest. These platforms like Udemy and Coursera and all these big ones, they're all video based. And if you're a video type of person, that's awesome. But video does have some problems. And one of the biggest ones is that it takes a lot of time to watch the vids. And also they're really hard to scrub through. So if you're taking a 40 hour course, it can be really hard to go back and visit that one specific concept. With Educative, there aren't any videos. We're gonna pop in and I'll show you some of the courses in just a second here. But you'll see that instead of video, you're reading, you're doing interactive exercises, you're looking at illustrations and graphs and tables and all these other things that take the place of video and help the concepts stick better than the traditional type of Netflix and chill video platform. And the other big thing that sets this platform apart, you'll see this in just a moment as well, is that you're not setting up any type of development environment. That is a big problem with video courses because the technology changes so quickly. Even videos that are three or four months old, sometimes the setup instructions are outdated or something's missing and it can get really frustrating. So this is my student area. This is what I'm working on right now, mastering concurrency in Go. This is one of the things that is also notable about this platform is that there are a lot of courses for newbies but also intermediate and senior devs have some pretty good pickings on this platform. Mastering concurrency and Go, not really something you're gonna be seeing on Udemy. The titles of the courses and the content of the courses on Educative are a lot more specific than what you're going to be finding on a lot of other platforms. Um, and that was something that stood out to me too. So here's what I'm enrolled in right now. I have the unlimited plan, so I have 200 courses at my disposal. But lately I've been really interested in Go. So these are the two intermediate courses I found, The Way to Go and Mastering Concurrency currency in Go, and then the beginner course in introduction to programming in Go. They also have a lot of web dev stuff. Uh, introduction to JavaScript first steps, learn React JS, Redux and Immutable JS while building a weather app. And there's one really cool project in here. Let me try and explore this and find it for you. You build Tesla's battery range calculator with React and Redux. Now this project has been here, this was here last year when I did the review and it's still here. So that's good to see. And it's a free course. So if you're trying to make a really neat project without spending 25 million hours on it, check out this course, 35 lessons, 26 playgrounds, 65 code snippets, and 55 illustrations. Let's actually hop into this one and you can see what it's all about. So we'll go to section one here, chapter five, the Tesla battery container. Now the snippets themselves are not interactive. Uh, you have to go down here and go to the actual interactive code editor to get things to run and you know start messing with code like this. But you can save it, you can reset it, you can resize it, you can access these different files. This is a really cool feature. It saves so much freaking time. And yes, eventually you're probably gonna have to set up your environment on your local machine when you're taking different courses and working on different projects. But as far as getting up and running, uh, it, the barrier to entry is just so low. This is the Tesla notice component. We have more snippets. And then down here we have that editor too. And we have all these files we can access. We can do whatever we want to them, totally destroy them. And so I ran that code and here is my nonsense typing right here. But as you can see, the output of this code is right down here. So nearly instantaneous. 
And this goes for darn near all the courses on this platform. Now, one of the things that can be a problem with a lot of these platforms is that you have no idea where to start. There are actually multiple entry points in this platform. So if you don't know what courses to start with, but you have a general idea like, OK, I want to be a front end developer. I want to learn React. You can check out this path section right here. They recently added this and these are all their learning paths that you can browse. So, for example, if we went to the become a front end developer path, six modules, the first module or course is preliminaries, then module two, hypertext markup language, HTML, module three, CSS, module four, JavaScript, module five, projects, and then module six, launching a website. This is inside the JavaScript module or the JavaScript course, whatever you want to call it. It has five quizzes, 28 challenges, 215 playgrounds, which is freaking massive, 90 code snippets and 40 illustrations. So again, all these courses are really engaging multimedia without the video. All the courses I've been through so far in Educative are organized like this. That is to say, really nicely edited for the most part. Um, you know, I have seen a typo here and there, but as far as like massive omissions, or just like blatant inconsistencies I haven't come across. So that is good. I know that sounds probably like a low standard, but normally going through these courses on different platforms, once you reach a certain point, you're like, okay, this is wrong. This is wrong. This is wrong. I'm not sure how often they're pushing new courses onto educative.io, but they do have an early access program where you can check out their latest and greatest. So right now their early access courses a guide to securing Node.js apps and building full stack web applications with Adonis JS. And again, going back to the specific nature of some of these courses, a guide to securing Node.js applications. That's all you're going to be doing in this course, focusing on securing your Node.js apps. I think that's one of the big reasons I keep coming back to this platform as a student myself. I've been in the software industry for a few years now. By no means am I a genius. I have a lot to learn. And this is one of the platforms I do go back to exploring some of these new courses and getting into some new technologies where it actually is interesting and I'm not feeling fatigued by video. And then if you just want to browse, you can just go to all courses and there is a ton of stuff here. And it's not just for web developers. As you can see here, a complete guide to Java programming, a beginner's guide to deep learning, advanced programming techniques, and D. You see what I mean, though? A lot of these courses and topics are very niche and specific. Modern Android app development with Kotlin, build your own chatbot in Python, the complete guide to jQuery. Good to see jQuery still getting some love. This looks like a fun one. Password security, how not to store passwords. Another thing I've noticed too with a lot of platforms and a lot of specific video courses for newbies is that they get right into showing you how to code rather than giving you a framework, if you will, for solving problems. And that's why this course in particular caught my attention. It's called Introduction to Computers and Programming. Hugely important topics that I don't know why no one ever seems to talk about in these courses. Learning how to write pseudocode, learning to draw flow charts, discovering how conditional statements are used in programs. So a language agnostic course, that means they're not teaching you a specific language like JavaScript or PHP or anything. They're showing you the basics of programming. 30 lessons, six quizzes. They even give you some playgrounds and code snippets. Let's pop into it and see what's going on here. Lots of illustrations, lots of graphics, and even a code editor right on the first page. You can run it. You don't need to know C++, but they're showing you the Hello World program in C++, just getting you introduced to the very basics. What is a computer? Now, some people may be scoffing at this and saying, oh, how basic, but where else are you going to learn it? And if you haven't learned it in school or college, this is an idea place because after you crank out this course, you can go on and learn how to code with these different languages and how to use these different technologies. The monthly plan is $59 a month. You get a month of unlimited access, new courses every week. Oh, so they're dropping courses every week. That's pretty sweet. Regular course updates. Uh, the annual plan, $249 a year, which is $20.79 a month. If you know you're going to take more than one course, I would say just go for the annual. If you like this style of teaching, you're going to love this platform. I've been on their annual plan since 2019. We're going into 2021. I'm still going to be on that annual plan. I really like this platform and the courses just keep getting more interesting and they keep getting better. If you're not a membership type person, they also sell the courses a la carte. So let me go to 
to the way to go. If you just wanted this course, it's 29 bucks. But stuff like the Tesla battery range calculator, this one's free, many others are too. And if you're not sure if you're gonna enjoy this type of learning or benefit from this type of learning, definitely check out their free stuff and see if it's something up your alley. And then you can make the decision to upgrade if you want. And if you don't like it, no harm, no foul. You spend a few minutes or a few hours uh, learning a new skill or building a new project. Final verdict going into 2021 is educative.io worth it? In my opinion, yes, it is definitely worth it. The way these courses are organized and the interactive code editors are top notch. It saves so much time. It's a really active way of learning. No videos to doze off to. The other thing I really love are the course offerings. Some of these titles are really esoteric and really niche. I just I just haven't seen them anywhere else. Um, that said, if you want to learn basics like CSS and JavaScript, you could totally do it on this platform in a way where you can get right into it. You don't have to spend hours setting up your local environment. You don't have to spend hours scrubbing through some videos. You can just get right into it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.